No worries. So we are recording. Okay, great. Um, thanks. Welcome. Are there, are there any um, members of the audience out there just to see? Yes, there are. We've got quite a few today, it looks like. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and get started. I don't have the slide that, um, that Vasu usually shows, so I'm not going to show it this week. And we'll just jump right into review of the minutes. So has everyone reviewed the minutes and would someone like to move to accept them or suggest changes? We can show them if anyone wants us to show them. I wasn't here last week, so I will be abstaining from this. I'll, I'll move to accept them. Okay. Oh, who's taking notes this week? I haven't done it in a while, so I can do it. Thanks, Laura. So Don just uh, moved. I'll give you a moment to get set up. Let us know when you're ready. Okay. Okay, so Don moved to accept the minutes. Is there accept? Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. And by voice vote in no particular order, Allison? Yes. Goldner? Abstain. Roof? Yes. Breger? Yes. Drucker? Yeah. D. Abstain. Uh, Oh, it's a majority of the quorum present. I think we're good. <laughs> I always have to say that out loud. Sorry. I was going to say that. To you. <laughs> it's, you're good. That's okay. Okay. Um, okay. So next up is public comment. If members of the public have questions, raise your hand. Questions or comments. Okay. We have four members of the public, and no one is raising their hand at this point. Okay, so seeing none, let's go ahead and move on to updates. So Stella, I think you're on first transportation update. Uh, yeah, um, I am in contact with TAC. Uh, so I'm going to go to their meeting on the 27th. Um, and um, chat about the CARP and stuff and kind of talk about collaboration and whatnot. Um, so if anybody has things that you want me to talk about or what have you, thoughts, feel free to send them to me. And then um, green energy consumers is still coming to chat. That's pretty much the the update. And that's, I forget what date it is. It's in my calendar somewhere, but I don't. April 26th. Yeah. Next it's meeting. The day before, actually. Yeah. So that's our next meeting at five o'clock. Uh, they're planning on chat talking at 5.30. Okay, because I think I have a flyer that you did. Let me make sure that flyer right. makes sense then. The flyer says five. Yeah, that's what I thought. The, oh, okay. I corrected okay. a version that I thought I sent that said 5.30, but let me... Yeah, I think mine said 5, but I will I will change it if it says Stephanie, 5. When you, sent, when you sent the three flyers out together, that one said 5. Right. And then there was another one I thought maybe I had corrected it on my own. Oh, you know what? I think I sent it to Stella, but I don't know that I sent it out to the group. So if you just send it to all of us then, and that would be easy. Yep. Yeah, I just wanted Stella to take a look at it first. Okay. Um, all right, I will do that. And I'm making a note. Anything else? No, I think that's it. I have a question. When you talk to the TAC, to what extent are they concerned with, I know, with bicycle access around this town? Do they spend time on that? Do they... Hmm. Bike access? Yeah. Well, there's some yeah, they have this whole great, really great plan. Um, 
the bike and pedestrian plan that they put out that it sounds like isn't fully, fully finished. There's some mapping, like last mapping and stuff that needs to be done. Um, but yes, the short answer is yes. Are they taking uh, input on that plan? Is it posted anywhere? Yeah, it's posted. Um, it's posted. I could, oh, they're right. There's no chat in this. Um, we can send it around. I can yeah. send it to everyone. Yeah. Okay, that would be great because I would love to see what's there and comment on it myself. It's really fantastic. It's a great plan. It would be good to not feel like I'm going to die every time I go out on Pelham Road on my bike. 100%. Yeah. 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 For those of us in Echo Hill, we're a little isolated from by, uh, getting out to the bikes. Yeah, getting out on bikes. I use a big pool noodle out into traffic when I go on Pelham Road. Well, that was you. I saw you the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Thought that's a great idea. Yeah. The only way to keep people from trying to kill me. I've been sideswiped too many times. They can sideswipe the noodle. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At any rate, um, onward. Um, so then there's a review and vote. Are we, are we, oh, sorry, heat pump thing. Is, are we done with that, uh, Stella? I think so. Okay. Um, heat pump panel. So real brief update there. I did finally get a hold of um, uh, Scott Chernak just today, finally. Uh, it's quite, an, quite a um, saga. I tried emailing him, the email bounced. I asked Jesse if he had a phone number and he gave me the general phone number for Western Mass heating and cooling. <laughs> I did finally manage to get through. He's very happy to come and join us on May 10th. Um, I still don't have a good way to reach him. He says my email, he's gonna to try to make my emails not bounce anymore. There, he has a very oh, strong answer. Yeah. I have a great way to reach him because he's, he's installing our geothermal system. And Excellent. He, I connect with him all the time. Um, okay. No, Good. And that changeover is is happening next week, actually. Okay. The system's all, it, it, the whole switch over from our propane system is taking place next week. So we are in regular communication with Scott and with Ben Christopher, who's actually the project manager for our project at Western yeah. Mass. Yeah, it's interesting. I also used Western Mass. I think most of us ended up with them, but I didn't ever talk to Scott through that. It was Lauren Harris and Mike, somebody, and I forget who else, a couple other people. So, um, all right, so good. So if I need help contacting him again, Don, if you have a number to reach him at, that uh, cell number even, um, he says the cell I'll, doesn't. I'll, I'll forward it to you. I'm If I don't, I'm sure my wife does. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, but at any rate, so that's, that's in place. So who among us is going to volunteer to answer questions? Is it all of us? Don, you'll do the geothermal. Yep. Right. And Steve, do you have a, what sort of system? Did you have a system installed recently? I, I, I have a heat pump water heater that okay. I'd be happy to talk about, but not heat pump space heating or cooling. That's fine. What else do we got, Dwayne? Yeah, I have, um, uh, uh... Uh, air source heat pumps. Um, I have one system also that's um, internet connected, so I can control them remotely, uh, which yeah, is a really nice feature. Yep. Uh, so is this air source mini splits? Mini splits, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Um, Laura? Yeah, I have um, two mini splits and a air source house system. Um, so I don't know how much overlap there's. I don't know if we all need to be yeah. there, but um, happy to. Remind me, your air source has has some sort of uh, fuel backup, oil or, or gas backup or no? No. Electric backup. Yes. Okay, so it's different from mine. Mine still burns fossil fuel for backup um, just because I have gas and it's still way too expensive if I'm going to, it's not economical for me to do it. So I didn't quite go all the way, but I'm set up to go all the way when the price changes. So, um, and, and who else did we leave out? I can just uh, throw uh, a wood pellet oh, stove in the mix. Oh, yep. <laughs> I, I also have a wood stove, wood pellet stove and Stella. Yeah, we have, we switched to mini splits and um, I don't heat pump water heater, but I, 
can't talk about it because it was all my partner doing the logistics. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I can say that they work. And we have a like just a fireplace for backup. Okay, so um I just want to get all this down. Okay, cool. Um, so I think that's going to be great. Scott mentioned that he would like to give a little overview of heat pumps. So I told him, you know, we were trying to do mostly question and answers. I have a feeling though he's still going to end up putting together something that's probably 20 minutes. So maybe we can all just, you know, introduce ourselves in a minute or two and say what system we put in and then invite people to contact us whenever. I mean, you know, through through ECAC or through Stephanie or um, if they have more questions that didn't get answered. Um, and I think the key thing here is going to be to advertise this early so we can start advertising it right away. Um, okay. And I think that's all I got. I mean, it's going to be pretty informal. It's going to be Scott, I think, giving us a little overview of, I think what we'll do is introduce each of us and then introduce Scott, let him talk for 20 minutes and then take Q&A. Sound, sound right? Okay, cool. All right. So the next thing is a letter to new DPU commissioners, but that's Andra. And so what do we do with that? You skip it. <laughs> you put it off for another meeting. I wasn't exactly sure when, and I'm just kind of keeping it as a placeholder. Okay. So you can just move that to another, the next meeting, but I don't know that she'll even be ready for the next meeting. Yeah, so I do have a question about that. I had sent Andra after our meeting like a month ago, we had decided we wanted to write a letter um, to about the Springfield pipeline. And I see from the notes last time that that sort of expanded, maybe expanded, maybe it's a different effort into a general note from town council supporting uh, or not supporting the expansion of pipelines anywhere, of, of gas distribution lines anywhere. Um, I had done some research to put together a little letter, sent a draft to uh, Andra because I wasn't sure who we were addressing and then never heard back from her, I think, because she's been busy with her, you know, with, with everything in her life. So um, it sort of got put off. Is it still worth pursuing that letter as well? And I think the intended audience for that was for the town council to write to the, to support the efforts of the groups in Springfield who are opposing the pipeline, the, the distribution line that's going in, but that's proposed to go in. So does that sound like something we still want to do, or should I talk about that later in member updates, or is it related to this DPU? The DPU commissioners is different, completely different, I think, right? That's just yeah, there was a letter that Vasu sent a few meetings back, and now I don't remember. I'd have to pull it up. My memory, if my memory serves me correctly, Andra's um, main objective on the DPU letter was more about municipal aggregation. All uh, right. And trying to, to um, um, smooth out that process a bit. Uh, Stephanie probably knows more about that. Yes, that's true. And they were they were two separate um, efforts, though. There was another letter that you were discussing town council um, to take a stand. And I'm pretty sure that that was the letter that Vasu had maybe drafted, but I can't recall it. It's a few meetings back and I'd have to pull it up and take a look. So, okay, I somehow I probably because I missed a meeting, I think maybe, oh, but that was would have been several meetings ago. I am mean? confused because I would have been at that meeting. I don't remember it. All right, well, let's let's put that on the agenda for next time. Then uh, the Vasu's, um, if we can find that meeting that 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 letter that takes a stand on pipelines, I'll also bring a draft of the one I've been working on. Uh, specific to the Springfield pipeline with some uh, facts and figures thrown in that I that I looked up. It's short and to the point, but. Um, I believe off. you did go over your draft at the last meeting. Did we? Andra, Andra put a draft up on the <laughs> screen and we talked through it and gave her feedback. I never uh -huh. got any, any feedback on that. That's interesting. So. So oh, yeah, but, um, but it was just last week because we just met last week, right? Am I, or am I? Yeah, you just met last week. I was at the the BEA meeting. 
Uh, no, I was at last week was Passover. Oh no, last week. So we did not meet last week. Okay. Anyway, we did look at a letter and we provided some feedback. So it's in Andre's hand. So um, I'll just note in the minutes that you'll connect with Andre and we'll bring it up at the next meeting. Okay. And for clarification, that meeting was the adoption of specialized building code. That's what the letter to from Vasu to the town council was. Oh um, yeah, that was a different one. Okay. So that was a different letter. One. So um, also letters, there was uh, Vasu regarding that one. I remember special adoption of specialized code. We really should do. Boston has now done it, you know. If Boston has done it. We all should be doing it. Um, and then there'll also be a letter on the pipeline. I think it's a little later than we wanted to be with that one, but so be it. Um, uh, and if Andre does not connect back with me because she's recovering, I'll just bring something with me. Um, draft regardless. And then there was also last time the discussion of a letter to take a general stand on pipeline. So where did that one come from? General stand, was that from Andre last time? I think that was your letter. That was my letter, okay, all right. And also, okay, expand to take. Okay, good, 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 good. So letters for next time, three. What the third? What's the third one again? I thought that's the, what the letter to the DPU commissioners for a, regarding municipal aggregation and smoothing out that process. Uh, letter regarding the adoption of specialized code to the town council and letter regarding pipeline expansions, and particularly okay. the Springfield expansion. Okay. And it's a little unclear to me, um, you know, so the DPU one is going to the commissioners from us or from the town. Is it a draft that goes to the town to go to the commissioners? Or is the intent for us just to send it? Well, I think um, if it's going to the DPU commissioners, I think it was, um, it would be from the, the town, not just the committee. Okay, town. And the same thing with the, um, adoption of, well, specialized code is a, is a recommendation. This is a recommendation. To right, correct. And the pipeline thing is sort of twofold. It's to get the town to support all the other entities that are opposing the pipeline in Springfield and oppose pipelines generally as a change of policy. Sort of, I'm a little worried because it's two things. It's a change of town policy opposing any new pipelines uh, or any access, you know, any change, I would think, in the status of in the embargo against gas in Amherst. Um, so no new gas hookups anywhere. Um, I don't think that was part of the letter we looked at last time. It wasn't. Okay, good. So it was just the, so it was probably just the pipeline letter that I had drafted. Okay. So I will just do that. So that letter could also be a um, a, uh, a, a editorial. We could also just do another one of those editorials from ECAC, right? So I, I think what I'll do is I'll probably come with two different letters, one for the town council, one to use as a editorial, as a op-ed, you know, opinion piece, a letter to the editor. Does that make sense? Anything else on letters? This pot, this item, this uh, agenda item sort of became letters generally. <laughs> okay, then onward to the sustainability festival moving right along today. Um, 
So I, I think this is straightforward. Jesse has gone out and bought a 10 by 10 tent, which I will get from him uh, probably the Friday before, some a couple day or two before the event. I'm going to bring a couple of tables. Um, I think Steve, is that you who said you had, someone had a thing to hold flyers or flyer? Plastic I thing. have a, an easel that will hold one of those large pads of paper. Oh, you have that now. Okay. You do have well, one. I, I, can, I can get it from Hampshire and bring right. it okay. on Saturday. I think Dwayne was the one who said he had those clear Yeah, I had. I, I think I have four of them, uh, the clear things that would hold something and prop them up uh, so that we don't have to hand them out, but they just can look at them and has a QR code and so forth. Yeah. Um, what's my best way to get that to you? Um, uh, I figure I'm going to just spend some time Thursday or Friday before the event going around town. Picking okay. Them up. <laughs> okay. I can, yeah, I can bring them home and walk them over to you. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, works too. Okay. Uh, where are you? Where are you on campus, Dwayne? Uh, a building oh, you've never heard of, agricultural engineering building. Are you going to the energy no. networking event next week? um in the morning yeah yeah, yeah the morning. i'll be there we could we could bring them there too okay okay i will try to yeah i'll, I'll put that in my notes yeah okay. okay if we don't connect there then it will be another then i'll pick them up whenever yep. um, i'll figure that out next week <laughs> one week at a time yeah exactly um okay good so i think uh steve has the other easel and pad And I have tables. Okay, so far I have the EV flyer, which needs a change in the time. I put together um, a couple of flyers, one of which it occurred to me that the thing we left out last time we talked about flyers was a flyer that connects people to sustainable, sustainable sustainability, Emmer Sustainability website or whatever it's called. <laughs> the one whose name I don't like, but whatever it's called, I put it on the flyer and Be it's nice. got a QR code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's got a lot of, it's a great website and it has a lot of information on it. So I thought we really want to connect people to that. We really want to connect people to the ECAC website and to our own events. Um, so I cut, put a couple of flyers in the packet. Um, have you guys had a look at them? Anyone have any comments? Should I show them or just go with it? Go ahead, Steve. I was looking at those. I thought they looked good. Okay. I even checked out the uh, QR code and it seems to work. I wasn't sure if it worked with the dinosaur there in the middle. That's how they, that's how they happened. I had to figure out how to do that. Uh, <laughs> the dinosaur just sort of happened. I, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> we, we might have covered it, but um, the time for, where did I happen to see it? Yeah, on the one that's the ECAC flyer at the bottom there, Stephanie, it says Wednesday, April 26 at 5 p.m. Electric Vehicles 101. I I'm think that's the one that needed to be updated yeah. to 530. Yeah, that's all we're going to. Uh, you got yeah, that? There's yeah. a corrected, there actually is a corrected version, and oh, I yeah. sent it to Stella, <laughs> and I thought I put it in your packet, but I think because Lori sent those, I didn't look to see oh, which version she had it's, sent. It's in, two, it's in two places. There's my, I, I copied the time from the first EV flyer that I got, which was five o'clock, so I have an EV flyer that's probably also wrong. Okay, um, well, let me double check. I'm just going to double check because I'm pretty sure that I must have forwarded it to Brianna, yeah. our communications person, which might make it a little okay. more complicated. So if it's really everywhere, we might yeah. want to see if they can do five instead of 530. Well, I, I just changed it on if it's already out there. Uh, yeah, I, well, it's, let me know because I just changed it on the ECAC flyer. And I also put in the time for the Wednesday, May 10th heat panel thing. So I put that in as well. I had right. TBA, I think, on the original one. Now it's actually in there. It's the only change I made. If it's okay with us, my sense is they're super flexible and would probably rather come earlier than later. I'll, so. I'll double check on that as soon as this meeting is over. Okay. I'll put some stars here and say check. <laughs> All right.
Okay, things that I still need. I just have a quick question only because I'm trying to keep in mind what you, Stephanie, keep saying to us. Um, and in the, the ECAC flyer, it says what we do. And it says we make recommendations to the town council. Mm -hmm. And I oh. thought you told us that we make recommendations to the town manager. Ooh. Um, Might who, be one of the things I changed. I'll have okay. to double check on that, but okay. thanks for catching that. Yeah. Town council. Okay. So you're going to send me an edited. Did I send you a PDF or did I send you a word version of that, Stephanie? Uh, I can't remember. And I just, let me see. I don't know what I sent out. I think you sent a PDF. Okay, I right. can send you a Word version so that you can edit it. I didn't realize okay. that there was a, I thought I looked that up, but uh, I thought I pulled that off of a website somewhere, that recommendations to the town council phrase. Um, but I might've screwed up. So uh, is, is it, do you know if it's manager or council? Oh, it should be town manager. You're a, you were appointed by the town manager. You're okay. a, a town right. manager committee, not a town council committee. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so I just changed town council to town manager on that anyway, just in case there's a, uh, something happens. <laughs> I changed it and I will also make a note to send you, um, send Stephanie Word versions of the flyers. Any, any other comments on flyers? Thanks for catching that, Don. Uh, I still need that pace flyer formatted. Did anyone ever format that? I, we've kind of held off on that until, um, and and I'm happy to do this in the updates. Um, Stephanie can chime in since she's the one who actually got the return email from uh, Mass Development. But we were we wanted to make sure that whatever we put on a flyer was consistent with what Mass Development how they're implementing this this program, and they're still in the process of figuring out in light of the change in the program um how, how they're going to implement that is that fair to say stephanie yeah they're doing program updates and so yeah. they're not actually holding any events right now until all of that um change in regulations has been ironed out so we shouldn't be sending mm -hmm. materials out about the program right now because things are changing so we might just want to okay. hold off a bit it may be in May. They, it's not really ridiculously crazy out. It might be, you know, the end of May, maybe June. Okay. But so it won't be for the sustainability festival. The only other right. flyers I was going to have was a really simple one that says, read the carp here. Boom. And then maybe decarbonize your home for renters, decarbonize your home for, if I can, that would probably be, I'm not sure how to do that without it being an actual flyer um, for renters and for homeowners, how to decarbonize your home. Although really the, the sustaining Amherst website has some really good, stuff on it so and good links so that might be thank enough. you <laughs> yeah and then a mass save qr code somewhere and that'll probably just say mass save and be a big qr code on some on top of one of the one of the um easels <laughs> and then i think that's it now the other problem we have is manning this thing so i wanted to go over the uh that quickly let me find it ecac schedule so Don, are you going to be there at eight and nine? I, I plan to be if you needed, uh, I can be really flexible. So you tell me where you need me and I'll come because my wife has signed up for the whole day for <laughs> mothers out front. So oh, good. You know, okay, I, cool. can, I can be flexible. So, okay. So then where I might need you instead, it looks like we're thin with a bunch of people who can't make it for various reasons, right? So it's just going to be one of us there all day. Um, so I can do the morning if you want. The time that I'm not sure of, and Jesse's not here, is three and four. So what I have is, right now I have, uh, I can stay in from eight till to noon. Steve takes over at noon and one. That's still okay. Um, Jesse might be available at three and four, but he didn't make a commitment. 
So if Jesse's not available at three and four, Don, I think I'll stick you in there. <laughs> That's fine. I, okay. I meant it when I said, I am at your disposal. Okay, then I'm just gonna put you in uh, there, but I might change you back to the morning because I could probably use some help setting up and I would love to come at nine and not eight if possible. <laughs> Believe me, I'm up in plenty of time. So eight, whatever works, Laurie, whatever works. Okay, so I'll be- me to come at eight and at four, that would work too. I'm just right. wandering around all day. So Stephanie, yeah. what I'll do is I'll put the final schedule together after I hear from Jesse and then if you would just distribute it to everyone to make sure we're all on the same page and we all show up at the right time. I think that piece you could actually do, Lori. I mean, I you're just sending send the out. schedule out. Yeah. You can just send okay. that out. That's not, there's okay. nothing you're deliberating over. Okay, cool. I can do that. Great. Um, Any other suggestions or thoughts for the sustainability festival? Uh, Lori, just, yeah. I don't know if we have a, 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 enough plastic holders, but just, or maybe it just go up on the uh, somewhere else, but uh, just a flyer on the UMass uh, energy transition symposium. Um, and for this group, um, we're going to have, um, I guess, um, um, plenary speakers that are um, that might interest uh, the community. We're going to out outreach us to the community as well. Uh, we have the um, joint chairs of the Telecommunication Energy and Utility Commission uh, um, Committee, yeah. uh, 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 Jeff Roy, I think it is, and, and, and Barrett, I believe it is, Senator. Um, as well as Mindy Dom and, and, and Joe Comerford are speaking and, and our chancellor, uh, Subha Swami, um, will be plenaries and then, and then um, a lot of posters uh, from, from grad, uh, undergraduate and graduate students. So um, I'll send around a flyer on that because a, a new flyer has just been created to Stephanie and she can circulate that to the group if she's so willing. Um, uh, I think there's additional effort to reach out to the five colleges, Steve. Um, but um, uh, but also we'd like to draw folks from the community as well. So if there's room for it at the uh, on our table at the sustainability festival, I'd love to um, sure. offer that as well. Yeah, I suspect that some of the uh, flyers are going to end up under rocks, so <laughs> I don't mind putting under it rocks. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, right. Yeah, I, I just I'm not going to bring a stack of them. I don't want uh, a rock that. Yeah, just just one of them. One of them under something. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I can see if I have something to hold stuff like that too. I might have something around. Um, we'll get as many as we can, and yeah, yeah. you know, all that we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I'm happy to. I'm happy to have a. I can, you can always tape it to the table too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that works. So if you send that, I'll make sure I have a copy there or a couple. Copies. Maybe I'll give you that when um, I give you the plastic things. Yeah, yeah, great. And it'll probably, I suspect it will show up in my email box at some point. I got the first, yeah. energy, yeah. I got the email, but I didn't see a flyer attached to it. Yeah, there, and there'll be a new flyer that has the speakers on it now. Yeah. Okay. And Lori, thank you for doing that one for the um, the flyer for the sustaining Amherst page. I'm yeah. probably actually going to print it out and have it at the information table too, Yay. which is where I'll be. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you. No, no problem. Um, all right, I think we're on staff updates. Um, right now, it's all sustainability festival all the time, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, like I said, it's going to be a smaller event than we've had the past. Well, we didn't have anything the last couple of years, but prior to that, we had over 100 vendors. And at this point, mm -hmm. we're actually whittled down to about 35 or so. Um, that does not include perform performers or special displays. But um, I think it's okay because we also didn't know until a month ago that we're sharing the space with the farmer's market. So um, it's going to, you know, it's going to change the layout quite a bit. So I'm about to work on that next. Um, you know, and I always, you know, this is the time where I get people drop out and people want to 
add on. So this is where it gets a little crazy because there's sort of all this configuring and trying to place people and then people change things up. So um, so that's kind of what I'm dealing with right now. And um, other than that, um, I would say things with the community choice aggregation continue to move forward. Um, we're in um, communication with the consultant about we have to create websites. Um, each community has to have their own website that has information about the aggregation. Um, it will link to the consultant's site, but it has to have their very specific documents that the DPU wants links to on everybody's website. So each community has to create that and it has to exist in perpetuity. So, and it can't be embedded in, you know, deep into the town's website, it has to be very prominently featured or easy to access. So um, we're sort of figuring those pieces out and also the materials that will be going out to uh, begin the community outreach um, stage of this effort. So that's all happening fairly soon, I would say. Um, I think our goal is to sort of launch that in in May, but we just have to make sure that everything, all of these things, these pieces that we're doing, the materials and the websites and all that are, are um, up and ready to go when we start that outreach. So, um, that's, so that's coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's one of those, you know, sometimes when I work on projects that feel like they're just never gonna happen, you know, this is one of those, it's just been quite a while in coming. So it's pretty exciting to get to this point. Right. So um, yeah, so that's very exciting. Um, and then, as I said, I've you know we've got a contract now with KLA Associates for our community dashboard. Um, I haven't heard from them yet about sort of when we're going to begin that process, but um, that's moving forward. Um, we are um, we are submitting an MVP grant for resiliency to, um, and you know I don't know whether we'll. We'll get this grant, but it's to uh, do some work over at Puffer's Pond, which is our one community cooling location. It's the only really large body of water. It's free to community members. It's on public transportation routes. So there's a lot of reasons why this is a really valuable resource, especially right now as we get um, more and more higher degree temperature days during the summer. We really need to have somewhere for community members to seek release. So relief, I'm sorry. So we're we're doing quite a um, a bit to try to improve that location. Um, the pond needs dredging, the dam needs shoring up. Um, there's, you know, uh, trail work that needs to be done sort of adjacent to it to prevent erosion. So there's quite a few things to sort of make that and enhance that. Um, you know, a place for the public to utilize. So, um, so that's that effort is moving forward with a consultant who's going to assist us with that application process. Um, let's see what else. Um, Green has his hand up. Is there a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yep, I didn't want to uh, get you off track, but um, okay. I have a comment on Puffer's Pond. <laughs> uh, you, you, you're you're mentioning Puffer's jogged a memory of a conversation I had a couple of weeks ago with a, a, a friend, a colleague, a friend um, who, um, and I, I thought I, I told him I'd bring it forward to the committee here. Um, uh, he, he lives adjacent to Puffers and has always been wondering about tapping into um, all that potential energy or kinetic energy, I guess, uh, of the water spilling over the dam there. Um, and and now that you're uh, uh, talking about some you know wor some work going on at Puffers, um, I said I'd bring it up. Um, uh, my sense is that at the end of the day, it's not a huge amount of power, but it's some. Uh, and uh, but I, also there may be just some some um, reasons why it's not um, feasible. Uh, but um, I'm wondering if if that's ever been looked at. Uh, or whether um, and what Dave Zomek would have to yes, say. Yes, we've we well we have we have explored okay. yeah. the idea about hydropower. This is certainly not the first time we've heard this suggestion. Um, it does not generate enough, you know, enough. It wouldn't be enough power. Um, and also, I think there were some safety issues in terms of um, putting in some kind of a turbine or something would 
potentially be a problem there at that location. So I think there were, there were reasons why I don't have all of them. This is just my recollection um, because it has come up before. And those were my, that's what I recall from the last time we, we discussed it. And there may be additional um, reasons, but I, I don't, can't think of them off the top of my head beyond, beyond those. Um, and then uh, the other uh, things that I wanted to say, again, I, I think I told you we secured the two fellows. I think I told you that at the last meeting. So they're, yeah. they're starting, um, they'll be starting in June, or really the end of May. So that's also really exciting to have those efforts moving forward too. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And then transportation, let's see. Um, uh, the electric fleet transition effort that has been really slow in part again and I think I told you this before it's sort of like what Steve was going through with the you know the um, rental housing stock in town trying just trying to get the data that we need in a format that we need has been a bit challenging because um, we have two separate systems that where our vehicles fuel at and they're different systems. And so for some reason, the way they sort of um, produce the data is a little different too. And so we're just not able to sort of match up exact vehicles with fuel usage. And that's of course the crux of what we need right now. So um, we're still sort of struggling with making that piece come together. So, um, and also, you know, cause it may mean that people have to program how some of the information is in the system right now and how it delivers the information back to us. So um, again, one of these things that always sounds like, oh, just get the data. <laughs> it's not always that simple. Laura. Yeah, so um, that raises a question I have about the dashboard and how might that process potentially help us with some of this data collection? In the future, like, can it be built into that process that we develop a better data collection process, or is this is that process going to run into these same challenges? Um, I don't know. The dashboard, I think, um, we haven't sort of fully flushed out how that will work just yet. I mean, we've had some very initial conversations, so I don't, I couldn't tell you at this point. It might be that the sort of down the road, it might. Initially, it won't, but down the road, it might be able to sort of help with that process. Um, part of that is that we don't have, in order to get a contract with KLA, um, they were doing a special, and the special would it sort of um, enabled us to go with them without having to go out to bid. So. And, and we know that we, you know, there are so many communities use their specific system. So we know kind of what they can do. So I think we just are trying to sort of figure out to get it initially just set up. And then, you know, it's the thing that once we get it set up, then we'll might be able to sort of expand on what it's doing and how it's doing it. So that's something that might, you know, that's a long winded way of saying that's something we hope to be able to do, but I don't think it's gonna be set up that way initially. Anything else, Stephanie, and any other? Sorry, <laughs> I was waiting for more questions. Um, uh, no, I mean, again, you know, there's a, a lot of things that are going on. Um, you know, those are just the things I keep reporting out on, but, you know, there's other, a lot of other little sort of efforts underway too. So, um, but that's it for now. I'm busy, Great. that's all, I'm just busy. Can we do anything to help? You are, <laughs> you already do, so thank you. And I'm sure, um, you know, as we move along, oh, this so the heat pump program, it's on my radar. It's just that I literally, right now, I feel like I'm dealing with the first, you know, emergency that I have to get to. And yeah. right now that's the sustainability yeah, festival. And that's, there's yeah. so many pieces to that. I just really need to give that a lot of my attention other than the support I give you all in the solar bylaw working group right now. Well, consider, um, yeah. When that's passed. Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say when that's passed, then I can definitely like the heat pump program and the community choice aggregation are the things that I'm really most like right now, the, those are the next big things that I really have to sort of uh, work on. 
Right. And considering you started off by saying it was all sustainability festival all the time, you then gave us about half a dozen <laughs> other things going on. So that's that's quite enough. Thank you. <laughs> um, OK, ECAC member updates. Moving on. Go ahead, Dwayne. I mean, I'll, I'll just provide that the uh, solar working uh, bylaw working group is uh, continuing to meet um, and make progress. Uh, I will uh, particularly provide a shout out for meet our meeting Friday. Uh, we do have, um, as as we have in the past, sort of bring in some quote unquote expert uh, and and topic specific uh, speakers to um, advise us and and inform us about certain issues. We do have this Friday. Um, Jonathan Thompson uh, from the Harvard Forest uh, that will be um, speaking informally. Uh, I think he may have a short presentation, but then main, mainly a Q&A uh, with regard to that we've been uh, pulling together for him to uh, uh, give us some, some uh, you know, science-based information on force um, uh, and, 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 uh, and solar. Um, he's obviously a... a um, uh, has done a lot of work in forest, but he's also been involved with the state in their uh, decarbonization plan, uh, has been um, working with them on, on uh, certain portions of that, particularly with regard to land use issues. Nice. So that's at um, 11.30 to 1.30, and uh, Jonathan, uh, hope to have him for about an hour uh, at the beginning, uh, or at least very close to the beginning of that time frame. Nice. And uh, I mean, I, that's an invitation for anybody who'd like to join us. <laughs> uh, and that's on the town website under the Solar Bylaw Working Group or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. If I can, I will try to be there just to hear. So I was just going to say that I did go to this, uh, Jesse was there too, this Building Energy Boston conference, which was highly informative and often very amusing. Um, there were two things in particular that might be of interest to this group, um, the, and they were the two keynote addresses, which were very good. Um, the first one was Lisa Cunningham and a guy whose name doesn't come to me right away, talking about the whole experience of the Building Electrification Accelerator Group and how they made change, how they got the recent specialized code in place and you know, have slowly been changing the policy and legislation in, in um, Massachusetts. And it was a very entertaining story because they got so close so many times and then were rejected <laughs> at the last minute. It just fell apart and they came back again with something new and were rejected again. And they came back again with something. And it was, it was they, they thought, and they were, they were, one of them was talking about uh, policy and the other was talking specifically about politics. And the other was talking about, um, heat pumps and the underlying policies that they're trying to get in place. And it was a very funny back and forth between the two of them. And it was a nice, it, you know, it cleared up a lot of things for me that BEA had been trying to do that I didn't really understand why or where it came from. Um, the other one was an interesting story on, you know, we started off when I first joined ECAC, I, um, I'm slowly learning about, uh, you know, there, there's a need for electrification. There's also a need for, for um, conservation and um, insulation, right? Insulating structures. Uh, but there was a real push at this building electrification meeting to skip the deep energy retrofits that how they you know, really, really rebuilding a building and trying to get it all tight and passive um, doesn't pay for itself in the end. Um, and combine that with the fact that I was staying with a friend in Boston who's in a very old building with a, with a dirt basement, right? That is impossible and extremely expensive to uh, insulate. Um, and yet is very tight. I think in part because it's massive. It has huge old, it has plaster everywhere and holds a lot of heat. So it's got a very long time constant. You know, If you heat the inside of it, it takes it forever to cool off. Whereas I have friends in Amherst in similarly old houses with no insulation and that don't have tons and tons of old plaster and aren't as tightly built. And they can't even put a geothermal system in because there's no way to insulate their home well enough that would ever heat it. 
So it's an interesting, uh, I, it was an interesting talk about, um, you know, what is really required to electrify and, uh, you know, what, what's the most, what's the biggest bang for the buck in terms of getting rid of fossil fuels. Um, and I'll leave it at that. I just wanted to, there were a lot of really interesting and informative talks. I'll probably go again next year. Um, at any rate, I don't have anything else. If there's any, any other updates. Also a lot of talk about solar storage and storage of heat rather than electricity and how that makes a lot more sense in many cases. It was a very good uh, seminar on that, different ways to do that. Okay, so items for the next agenda then, if there's nothing else in the way of updates. I think we had a couple earlier. We should probably do a sustainability fest. We have the three letters. Um, we have the uh, Andra's, if Andra is back, um, well, that was three letters included one. I, I think that was Andra's, the thing we skipped today, right? Yes. So there are three letters. You have the presentation. There's a, oh, right. Next time is the presentation. So I don't think we need to worry too much about these others. Maybe we can put them off. The other thing I was going to put on there was just a recap of the sustainability festival. Maybe that can wait another week. Um, also, I know that um, the report, the final report will be ready um, from GZA. So I know that Adrian had sort of planned on doing a brief presentation, I think, for you. We hadn't determined if we should do just one presentation at a time and invite both the Solar Bylaw Working Group and the ECAC to hear it. Um, it's really, um, at this point, you know, it'll be a final product uh, because of the timeline and we need to get it done. So it'll just be, because basically it's just, you know, reporting on what was covered in the surveys and the outreach that was done. It's more just a sort of factual, there's nothing, there's not a lot that's gonna be um, built off of that. It's more just reporting out of the information they gathered. Maybe we should just, so that will be done at the Solar Bylaw Working Group as well? It will, yes, it will also be at their meeting as well. So, so why you know, don't we just either watch a recording or attend that meeting if possible, because the next two meetings in a row, we have presentations. So they're going to be mm -hmm. short working meetings. Yep. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's good for us, too, because we were trying to sort of figure out how to best um, best do that. Okay, um, I see Steve and Laura. Yeah, I think I'd prefer to have them present at one of our meetings and not just have us as visitors to a solar bylaw working group meeting. I think we will have enough significant questions that it would be worth finding a time to include it during one of our meetings. Sorry about we that. could alter the time. We can, you know, you could start at four instead of 4.30 if that works for people on the 26th actually would be the best. I don't know if that works for folks. We uh, just need a forum to start. On the 26th, I think I can probably do that um, and then get a little more time in that way. That would be okay with me. It works for me. 26th or yeah. Yeah, that would be okay. Okay, and then we could have her at the beginning. Yeah, I was going to have a similar comment, mainly that because Friday lunch times never work for me. So, um, so thanks. Okay, I just need to confirm with her that that's the date that works. If not, we'll probably suggest the same thing for the May 10th meeting, which is the next one. Mm -hmm. Other 
So I think we should try to keep the agenda short. So um, we'll try to do, try to get, try to limit the discussion on the letters. And if we can't come to a quick consensus, we'll put it off another week. Um, and then I think they're just the usual things, the uh, updates and updates and that sort of thing. Anything else? If not, I think we should open for public comments again. Okay, Martha, sorry, I'm going to. Martha, have... I've unmuted you, you can go ahead. Thank you. Hello, it's Martha Hanner from District 5 here in Amherst. And I just had a couple of questions. Laurie, your, the meeting that you went to sounded interesting. And so I was just wondering, is there uh, anything on, on the web from the meeting, any kind of report or recordings or any way that people can access it? Uh, yes, I think there are for some of them. You might have to be a member of this uh, organization of the bill, what's it called? Um, mm -hmm. uh, NESEA. -E I can try to find out and send something. Uh, if I send something to you, Stephanie, can you get it to Martha or how does Absolutely. that work? Absolutely. Or you could just mention, a, mention it at the Solar Bylaw Working Group, maybe, Stephanie, if you, if you get the information, you could just send it to us there. Yeah, a big shout out uh, to to Nessie, which is the Northeast Solar Energy uh, Northeast Sustainable Energy Association. Uh, uh, serves the Northeast, uh, headquartered in Greenfield, uh, yeah. but they they uh, run the Building Energy Conference, and they've been doing the Solar Now Building Energy Conferences since the seventies. I could also just send a link to the site. Yeah. 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 So I'll just I'll just send the link to the site to everybody, both committees. Thanks, Tiffany. Okay. Okay. And then your meeting on May 10th, when you have somebody going to be coming and talking about heat pumps, will that be open to the public? And would the public be able to ask questions? It sounds like a, a great opportunity to let people uh, get educated. Yes, that was the whole the whole point of that panel. Is we did a we did a um, we did have a heat pump presentation earlier that was all about heat pumps. But the idea here was more to let people ask questions because I don't know about everybody else on the panel, but I get all sorts of questions from my neighbors about heat pumps, and I don't always know how to answer them. And some of them have questions about systems that I don't have in place, but others on the panel do. And then of course there'll be somebody there who's actually an installer and an expert. Um, who will give a little. So there'll be a short little presentation, hopefully, and then a lot of time for questions. Uh, and I hope very specific questions. You know, ask us about your house and what what would you need? Give us some idea of what you have. And maybe Scott or one of us will, something will click and we'll say, well, maybe you should look into this or maybe you should look into that. You know, hopefully it'll be a little more specific than we could do at the other, at the previous heat pump um, work, uh, seminar. All right, thank you. Please come. <laughs> and if anybody else from the public has a comment or question, please electronically raise your hand. No other comments. Okay, in that case, I think we're up to the adjournment, All right? Do we need to do anything else? Move to adjourn? <laughs> if not, see you all, give you, give you a, wow, 55 minutes back. <laughs> and see you all in two weeks. Right. Thanks, Lori. Yeah, that's good. Take care, everybody. everybody. All right. Good luck with the fair. Sorry, I can't make it. Thanks. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Bye. Take care.